Thanks so much, Jake. You know, for me, uh, those of you who don't know, you can't tell by a camera uh, because we're on Zoom and that's the great unifier, but I am a person with a disability. Uh, I have cerebral palsy and I was uh, born with cerebral palsy and I use a wheelchair on a daily basis. And when I was originally approached by James to join Like Ventures, he had said that he had done so many great things in his life and his career, but nothing of true meaning when it comes to supporting groups of individuals, particularly those with disabilities in meaningful ways and tying together his vast network of connections. So he asked me to come on and be the chair based on the work that I do. I'm from Vancouver, Canada, and I am an accessibility consultant and inspirational speaker. And that really spoke to the work that I've been doing my entire life. But most importantly, it speaks to myself as a person with cerebral palsy and wanting to see the world be more unified uh, and not focusing on our differences, but what we can bring to the table. The thing that I found in my background in technology, because prior to being a speaker and a consultant, I worked in the video game industry, but I found that there was a lot of innovations coming out through technology. And there were a lot of VCs or people in the healthcare industry that wanted to do good work with that technology. I found it ironic though, that not many of these uh, change makers were talking to one another. And so with Like Ventures, I would really like to see the opportunity where we can bridge the gap between individuals in the VC space, the healthcare space, and the technology space to come together, actually have meaningful conversations so that they can work together and move the needle finally on creating equity for all individuals, disability or not. And that's ultimately the goal with what it is that we're doing here today. And uh, we wanna have conversations that make you think a little bit differently and have you uh, really look at the ways in which we can incorporate some of these massive changes in little incremental ways. And so with that, and speaking of the energy that we're gonna put into this conference today, it is with great pleasure that I introduce our Energizer speaker, Emily Goodson. Now, Emily and I don't really know each other as well. We started to get to know each other actually through a, a conference that I spoke at in 2019. And it was very awesome because we became fast friends as a result of a mutual connection who met me at that conference. And it was very easy for me to see that Emily could be our energizer speaker. She has a breadth of experience in the HR uh, uh, field and supporting businesses to focus on inclusivity and individuals with disability. She founded an organization called Culture Smart. And I don't want to give away too much of her personal story because uh, she's going to go into that and how it ties into today, today's themes. So with that, Emily, please take the uh, floor. I'm very excited to hear you speak today. Oh, thank you so much, Marco. It's just such a pleasure to be here and to be speaking to this group. It's quite an honor. So I do want to tell you a little bit about my personal story, and I'm going to start perhaps in a little bit of an unconventional way and tell you about a book I'm reading, which is actually about shamans. And if you're like me two years ago, you may be wondering, well, what's a shaman? I'm not sure how to spell that word. You may be hopping off the Zoom to go Google it. And let me save you that um, task and tell you that a shaman is someone in certain spiritual traditions who heals, communicates, and sees beyond what we can imagine. Now, we're not going to be talking about shamans for the next 10 minutes. It probably isn't going to come up later today. So you're not at the wrong conference. We're here to talk about accessibility. But what's interesting about this is I want to ground us in this reality of thinking beyond what's possible thinking of what can we dream. So in this book that I'm reading, it's called Courageous Dreaming, How Shamans Dream the World into Being. And the book says that dreaming requires courage. For when we lack courage, we settle for a world that is dictated by our culture or our genes. And I think what's so fascinating about this is this idea that all of us, right, can dream a better world into reality. And we can dream a world, a better world into reality for people like me, for people like Marco, for people who have differences. And 
as we start this fantastic day, I want you all to ask yourselves, what is that dream that you want to create for yourself or for others? And what is one small step? If you take anything from today, I hope it's what are some small steps I can take to start advancing that dream? So I want to talk a little bit about me because I think, you know, a lot of us are here because we want to improve accessibility. We want to improve things for people who are different and who need accommodations. So take you back a number of years. Um, I grew up on the East Coast. And when I was eight years old, I was on vacation with my dad and my brother, actually in mid-October, as funny as that is. And um, we were at Mount Vernon, which is a historical site outside of Mount Washington, DC. And I fell. And falling is not unusual for an eight-year-old girl. But what happened after that fall was... So I don't remember much of what happened immediately before or after, but I'm told that one of the first things that happened is I started limping pretty severely. And then a couple hours later, my dad asked me to press an elevator button, at which point I took my right hand, reached across my body, grabbed my left arm and lifted it up to press the button. And at that point, it became very evident to him that something neurological was going on. Now, I'm told that after that, we had a number of conversations with surgeons about, do we operate in her brain? Do we not? Do we go in and remove this clump of blood vessels? I don't remember any of that. But what I do remember is asking the question, so what is the haircut going to look like coming out of this? Right, so you know, here we are talking about operating in my brainstem and typical eight-year-old girl stuff. I'm I'm worried about how much hair they're going to cut off in my head. Now, all joking aside, I was very fortunate. I was one of the lucky ones because I had resources through this hospital, through my connections, that a lot of people don't have. And now during the surgery, I did lose the ability to speak and I lost, the ability, I lost a lot of mobility on my left side. And if you were to see me in person, you would see I've gained a lot of that back. I do still walk with a pretty significant limp and I don't have a lot of function on my left side. However, I've been very lucky. And for the majority of my life, I sort of settled for that plateau, right, of I'm independent, I'm doing most things that I wanna do. But in the past three or four years, I've really gone on this journey of Emily the dreamer, the dreamer who reads about shamans, to think about what else is possible. And I think this group of people, I'm so excited about us coming together because I think we can dream that up and we can make some of this a reality whether it's through healthcare, technology, education, marketing, or fundraising. So I think back to being this little girl, and I think back to, there was a very vivid scene in The Empire Strikes Back, which is the second movie in the original Star Wars trilogy. And at the end of the movie, George Lucas dreams up this fantastic prosthetic arm for Luke Skywalker. And I remember watching this movie and, you know, his hand is out and you see the droid kind of poking at his fingers. And I remember thinking, not even questioning, but thinking, oh, that will be me. That, that'll be my left hand. Some technology in a couple of years is going to let me open up my left fingers. And I, that dream was there. And then it sort of drifted away as I got older. And now I find myself asking again, where is that arm? Where is this technology that could help me open my fingers or help me better bend my left knee and my flex my left ankle? Where is that technology? And I say all of this because I know that evolution is possible. So in the past four years, I've done quite a bit of work in acupuncture and osteopathy and different areas of 
physical exercise. And I have seen my left leg grow and change and develop. I've seen new muscles engage. And that's incredible. And what I'm asking this group and what I'm hoping all of us can do together is make that excel the acceleration of that progress faster for the next Emily or for the next person who's looking to live in a more accessible world or a world where they can function differently. So what I wanna do is I wanna to talk to you a little bit about one specific healthcare um, innovation that I've tried and that I've been a little frustrated with um, and, and have that speak to the progress that I think needs to be made. So when I was in college, I, um, I broke my right fibula, which is a little bone near your ankle. And as a side note, I broke it holding on to some guy for dear life on the back of an ATV, which is probably not a great idea, but it happened. And in the course of this, I was getting some therapy afterwards to recover from the fibula fracture. And the therapist said to me, well, you know, you really should be wearing heel lifts on all of your shoes and, and you really should be using a brace called an AFO, which stands for ankle foot orthotic. Now at the time, I had two questions. Number one, it's been 10, 12 years since my brain injury. Why am I just now learning about this? Why didn't anybody else tell me this? And number two, these heel lifts sound super complicated for someone who likes a lot of shoes. Now, I'll tell you, the heel lifts are not as bad as they sound. They are expensive. Um, and I've gotten them added to every pair of shoes since I was 18. But I've adjusted to them. And I do think they help to sort of even out my hips when I'm walking. But this brace is my real nemesis. Um, in college, it was this hot, clunky piece of plastic that ran up the back of my left leg um, to hold my ankle in place. And it just dug into my knee, it hurt, it was hot. And so naturally I stopped wearing it. Now, fast forward to today, for the past year, I've been working with an osteopath who is quite arguably one of the best in North America. And he has high hopes that we can improve my gait and how I walk through technology. And he urged me to go out and look at this brace again because he was certain that things had changed in the past 20 years. So I begrudgingly drove into downtown LA, met with this orthopedist about braces. And what did I find out? I found out that not a lot has changed. I found out that this brace now sits on the front of my leg a little bit more limber, but there aren't a lot of solutions for me until my ankle is more mobile. And to add insult to injury, this particular brace, because of the new design, only fits in shoes that lace up. And so at this point, I actually laughed at the specialist and said, okay, well, how is this supposed to work? I'm single. I live by myself and I only have one hand that can tie issue. How, how is this supposed to work? And the answer was to take this $700 brace out shoe shopping with me to search for a shoe that was wide enough, deep enough, ideally had a zipper around it to hold it in place. And I have yet to find a shoe that fits. And so I say this in closing to this group because this is a solvable, solvable problem. And there's so many of these problems out there. I guarantee if you talk to a lot of attendees of, of this conference, they would share similar frustrations. And I'm hopeful that as we all come together, problems like these are ones that we can solve to make the world a little bit easier and more accessible. And as I close, I just wanna leave you with this question that I started with, which is, around small steps that you can take to get to your dream. I just wanna share a secret with you. Um, and that's that every single day, I physically crawl on the floor of my house. And I'll be on the floor, you know, I'll put one elbow out, pull up my left knee, 
put the other elbow out, pull up my right knee. And the reason I do that is because it helps connect the different hemispheres of my brain and gets them to talk to each other. I don't do it because I like it. I hate it, but I do it because it's a small step that I believe is gonna directionally get me headed toward walking differently and recovering from my brain injury. So I leave you with what is your crawling? As you think about your dream and how you wanna make the world accessible, what is that small step that you can take to move towards it? So with that, I hope you have a tremendous afternoon, uh, evening, wherever you are. Thank you so much for joining. This is such an important um, mission. And Marco, I'm just so honored that you involved me in this. Thank you. Can you hear me? I can. You're back. Okay. Awesome. Sorry. My, my video is freezing on this end, so I'm trying to do my best to manage, but thank you so much. That, that, uh, story was completely riveting and you know there's a lot of parallels for me in my personal life with what's been going on and having cerebral palsy and having to navigate and crawling the floor even um but thank you for getting vulnerable and being completely authentic in your conversation and i really hope that it's helped to open the eyes of a lot of people that are here at the conference today so thanks so much and i can't wait to work with you again